Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the new Walmart On Streaming Stick. This is a super inexpensive streaming device that is designed to work with 1080p televisions. It doesn't have any of the bells and whistles that some of the more higher end units have, but from a value proposition, this one is going to be hard to beat, I think. And we're gonna take a closer look at this in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this streaming stick is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at only $15. It is exclusive to Walmart because this is their private label brand. It is designed primarily for older televisions, but you still need an HDMI port on that TV. Now, if your TV supports 4K, they've got another box here that sells for $5 more. That is probably the better way to go. I reviewed this one a few months ago, but this one for older TVs, I think is a very reasonably priced device. And I know a lot of people who travel like to throw these in their bags so they can watch some of their streaming shows off a device that they have under their direct control while in a hotel room. And this will certainly work well for that. Now it plugs into an HDMI port here if you don't have enough room on the back of your TV set to fit this thing, because it is a little bit long, they have an HDMI extension cable that comes in the box so you can kind of hang it off the back of the TV. So it was nice to see that. There are no other ports on here beyond its power port here. This is a micro USB port, not a USB type C port. And in the box they give you an AC adapter with that micro USB connector on the end. You could also plug it into your TV with a USB cable that goes from USB-A to micro USB. It doesn't need much power, just five volts at one amp, and it'll be up and running. A little bit earlier, I did plug in one of my little toys here. This is an ethernet adapter for TV boxes like this. And what this gets you is ethernet along with three USB ports that you can use for plugging in different devices. This is from a company called Esmaze, and I'll put the link to it on Amazon in the video description and it worked. So this USB port here is an OTG port, which means it supports devices beyond power. So you could plug in a keyboard, a mouse, have external storage if you want, all running through that port while still delivering power to the stick. But I think for most people, they'll plug the stick into their television. Now there's not much for uh, heavy duty hardware on this one. I believe it has an AM Logic S805 X2 processor. This is the same chip that is in Google's HD only Chromecast, and this is half the price of that. So keep that in mind there. It's pretty much the same device for far less money. It only has 1.5 gig of RAM and only eight gigabytes of storage. So you're not gonna be able to store much stuff on here insofar as games are concerned, but it has adequate storage for most of the streaming apps that most people use. So nothing too exciting here, but it's going to do the job, I think. We'll plug it in in a second and you can see it do that job. And then of course you have a remote. And what's nice about the remote is that it's a full voice remote, which is tied in with the Google Assistant. So you can ask Google questions, it'll search for things, and you can also activate some of your home automation just by using your voice on the included remote here. And this is the same remote that they give you on the more expensive device that they sell for $5 more. All right, I've got it booted up now, so let's see how it's going to perform. I'm gonna run this off of my Wi-Fi like most people will. It doesn't support the newer Wi-Fi 6 standard, but it's compatible with just about any Wi-Fi access point. I'm gonna load up Netflix here from scratch so you can see how quickly everything boots up. And normally if you jump back and forth between Netflix and another app, this will come up a lot quicker because it can hold part of it in memory. It's not too bad for the price point here. And what's nice about these sticks is that if your smart TV is getting a little less smart because it's not getting updated anymore, these little sticks will be able to get most of the apps that you're missing back again. It supports most of the major streaming services. As you can see here, things work pretty nicely. It's actually pretty close to their $20 box here insofar as its performance is concerned. I'm gonna do a quick search for their Creative Commons copyright free thing that they have on here called Meridian. And we'll just do a quick search so we can see how that performs here. And we'll play that back and see how it, how it does. So here we go. And we're gonna be running the 1080p version of this because that's all this stick supports. But as you can see, it comes up pretty quickly here. I can fast forward through different parts of the production, hit my button here, and there you go. So all in for $15, a very nicely performing device, especially for using your streaming apps.
Now, as I mentioned, this is an official Google TV device. And what Google TV tries to do is make recommendations for you based on what Google knows about you. You can turn this off, but if you like getting things recommended to you, you're going to see those things right here on the top picks line. But one thing that happens is that if your kid walks in the room and starts watching YouTube and starts looking for things while you're logged in, that's going to start impacting your recommendations. So here my daughter was watching some Toka Boca thing on YouTube and now I'm getting recommended more of that type of content even though I have no interest in it whatsoever. So it's really important when you have one of these devices to get everybody their own account so that your recommendations don't get all mixed up. One thing that Google's been doing a lot of work on lately is adding a lot of live channels to the mix and all of the major streaming devices are doing this now. Now Google has their own free streaming service now called Google TV. This is not the same as YouTube TV that they also own. YouTube TV is basically a subscription cable service that gets you major cable networks and local broadcasts. This is a bunch of free stuff, very similar to what you would see on Pluto TV. But they also support content from other apps too, and they try to categorize everything. So as you can see here, we've got stuff from Pluto and a bunch of other apps will appear in here. And over time, they will add more and more free stuff to the mix. So there is never a limit to free stuff that you can watch on here. And I kind of like the way that Google is presenting this free content versus some of the other streaming devices I've looked at recently. So this is a nice improvement here. Now you can also install apps on here, of course, and primarily the types of apps you'll install on this will be streaming apps, but they also have games that you can install. And this is pretty much the Google Play Store, just called something different. So if you were to purchase something, you would be buying it through Google Play and it would be available on your phone in most cases as well. You'll also find that you may have apps already that you bought on your phone that do have a TV version. So you may want to play around in here a little bit and see what you got. But here you can see a few apps that I've installed on other devices that are available here. And I found that most of the major streaming services, if not all of them, are available here on Google TV. You can see some of the more popular ones here as I scroll through. So whatever you're subscribed to, I think you'll be able to get at it from this little stick. Now it also supports Chromecasting, which lets you take something that's playing on your phone and cast it over to your stick and it'll pick up right where you left off. So for example, if you were on the train watching something on your way home and then you got home, you can hit the little Chromecast icon here in any app that supports it. You select your stick from the list here and what it will do is load up YouTube and continue playing that video right from where you left off with it. And it's a really neat feature. It's been around forever but this supports it just like the Google version does, but again, at half the price. Now it also has a universal search that you can summon with your voice. So for example, I could say, find Stranger Things. And as you can see there, it recognized my voice properly. You do have to hold down the button here at the top of the remote to issue that voice command, and then it will show you where you can watch it. Now this particular show is only available on Netflix, of course, but if there were other options, you could see other places to watch the show. My only gripe with this is that they have a watch list feature built into Google TV that lets you build a to-do list of things that you want to watch. And for whatever reason, Netflix doesn't work with this feature. So even though you've got the button here, when you push on it, you'll be told it's not supported for this title. But other shows do work in this way. Now, as I mentioned, you can install games on this and you can even pair up Xbox controllers like this via Bluetooth. But what I'm finding is that the gameplay experience, even for simple games like Crossy Road here, is not spectacular. The frame rate is very inconsistent. It lags quite a bit. Some other games I loaded had a lot of graphical glitches. And I think part of the problem is that the stick has very limited memory on board. So this is not going to be ideal for gaming, even casual gaming. So you should probably stick to streaming stuff versus playing stuff. Now it does seem to do okay with game streaming. We are currently streaming a game from NVIDIA's GeForce Now service, and in full disclosure, NVIDIA provided that subscription to the service free of charge to the channel here. And this, of course, is only 1080p, but it seems to be working okay. It certainly plays games a lot better this way, streaming them, than it does natively. And of course, there are other free options that you can use to stream games from PCs in your home, like Steam Link. So game streaming is a possibility here but you do want to make sure you've got a nice healthy Wi-Fi connection to make it work. And on the 3D Mark Slingshot benchmark test, we got a score of 541 
and that puts the stick here pretty much right in line with Google's HD offering that runs on the same processor. Now, as far as updates are concerned, this is running Android 12. Walmart doesn't advertise their update policy on this, but many users have reported that even some of their older TV sticks are getting at least security updates from time to time. So they've been a little better than expected, especially given how often they come up with a new version of a streaming device. So hopefully they continue that practice and it would be good for them to at least tell us what they plan to do insofar as updates are concerned in the future. But for 15 bucks, it is a pretty good deal. And I think if you've got an older TV set that's getting pretty dumb, this will breathe some intelligence back into it. And if all you're doing is streaming content from Netflix and other services, I think it's going to be more than adequate for the task. It's not so great for gaming as you saw, but I think for its design purpose, it is a very good value. Additionally, these are also very useful for traveling. So if you're going to Airbnbs or hotels, you can take this with you. You've got all your stuff on here, plug it into the back of the TV, watch whatever you want, pull it out, and then you've got it back in your bag again. They're very portable, very easy to travel with. And if you're a fan of Google TV on your home television, you can take it with you on the road. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Simon. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.